1975, the world was getting smaller. We traveled faster, communicated farther, all fueled by an explosion of high technology. But high-tech, post-secondary education was a distant dream for the East Kootenai. Jim Patterson, Dieppe veteran, hard rock miner, and union activist decided to do something about it. Well, the reason it started, I was down in Cranbrook and I met a lady from Fernie and I asked her, you know, if she was going to university. And she said, oh, I can't afford it. And so that hit me like a, a brick. I thought, well, if you can't afford to go out there to the university, you know, we should have something at least here. Dave Barrett, I think, was the premier of the province at that time. And uh, I either wrote or phoned and started in pressuring the government. And finally, they decided it would be a, a good idea. I don't believe in my life I have ever met a more dedicated person to a community in the region than, than Jim Patterson was. I don't know how I picked up Gary Dickinson, but uh, he applied. And uh, somewhat to my surprise, was invited up for an interview. Uh, I, uh, one of the first things that I did when I arrived in Cranbrook was to call up a real estate agent to find out about you know, the cost of housing there. Uh, and he said to me, uh, I understand that you're the new principal of the college. And uh, I kind of did a double take and said, well, I'm here for an interview for that, yes. But <laughs> so that kind of cheered me in terms of my prospects, I guess. Was, I actually was the first instructor hired. That was about two or three weeks before they interviewed the other instructors. Uh, and the reason that it happened that way was because they had to say yes or no or I was gone. Uh, and that was a, an interesting experience to go through because basically I was a one-person selection committee uh, and had, oh, it must have been close to 20 positions to fill. And the interview sort of went like this. Uh, are you offering me this job, yes or no, because I have this other job? And he said yes, and I said well. It was a very close community and those of us who, who started, and some of us had started with uh, with the East Cooney extension of Selkirk College. So there were mm, four or five, six of us maybe who had worked there and then the college, uh, the East Cooney College was established. And we had a real sense that we were, we were really breaking ground, you know. The, the one thing I think that was such a wonderful foundation for the college was the instructors. And I think that the dedication of the instructors in the early years was what really made the college what it was, certainly what it started out as. Well, we taught in everything from somebody's living room to, you know, an old pool hall. Uh, in Golden, it was actually an old pool hall. And we had, we had classrooms that were divided by tarps sometimes. Okay, I took off in the morning, got to Invermere at one o'clock, and was told that one of the students was, a, was the manager of the liquor store. So I went down and found him. And turns out two or three other students were, man were, were students because he was their boss. Uh, and there were several other students, one of who had just had a baby, and I had to go up to the hospital and see her. So we decided that while I was here, they were here, so we better do something. So we moved into the coffee room of the uh, Invermere liquor store, and we held a class there. Uh, Joe Selby's uh, line always was, if they live and breathe, they can be a student. <laughs> there were six of us, yes. Uh, we taught, we, at first we taught in the public library. We had a, a space in the library which was partitioned for us. Uh, we taught wherever we could find a space to teach. It's a little bit, going in, almost a little bit back to the origins of university itself where people found a teacher and then they found a place to do the, to, to do the teaching. <laughs> Then we had some instructors uh, from the hippie era. Don Kraft came in, this was winter, you gotta remember that, that was December. And he came in in gum boots up to his knees. He had his long beard, it went We down. didn't have running water and we didn't have electricity and we grew organic gardens and, you know, we, we just wanted to, to uh, save the environment. Sometimes when people would come to talk to me about my program, they would be 
stunned to see that I was the college instructor who was also the hippie on the hill. Student enrollment in Cranbrook expanded rapidly in the early years. Soon the college had locations all over town. The need for a new campus was desperate. Ultimately, uh, we ran the welding program on a 24-hour day basis, three shifts. Two shifts for uh, heavy-duty mechanics and three shifts around the clock. And uh, it was just, it was scrambled. I had a little foresight at that time, I guess. I, you know, that the area up there was available. There was no buildings on it or anything else and that we should you know, take and grab a hunk of that land up there just in case we grew, we grew in size. We were going to make a dream come true. You know, we're not talking about it anymore. Now we're digging dirt. When we start building up there, and I took a look at it and I thought, holy man, <laughs> you know, it was a big construction effort at that time. And a lot of construction noise and equipment, you could hear it. Uh, blocks away, you could hear all this construction going on. And right out of the blue, a letter arrived from the Agricultural Land Reserve Board to say that um, that land was, in, was, was within the Agricultural Land Reserve. They, uh, they were good in kind and very gracious and uh, let us off the hook, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny and embarrassing at the same time. And as I say, while we sat there, you can hear the construction. <laughs> On my arrival uh, early and uh, for preparations, as, co as coming up the driveway here to the college, uh, I noticed the scaffolding along the way. And what the uh, teachers had done to make a point is they erected uh, crosses, I should have said, rather than scaffolding. And they had uh, uh, Mr. Vanderzam hanging from those in effigy. <laughs> Finally, the great moment arrived when I was to introduce our platform guests. If you would uh, please hold your applause until I've completed the list of introductions. And of course, Mr. Vanderzam, in his typical way, you would have think he'd just been awarded the Nobel Prize or something, the way he handled that. It was just incredible. The big smile on his face complimented everybody on their singing. And <laughs> I realize, uh, as I hope and it would appear all of you do, uh, that we do live in a time of restraint. I'm very pleased at least the paper industry will survive in British Columbia. There's little question about that. Thank you very much for joining us on this very special and important day. The Honourable Dr. Morris Stilwell, Minister of Advanced Education and Labour Market uh, Development, has granted us the right to confer our first and very own College of the Rockies degree. a sound base, we can do the job. My invitation to you is to try it. I think you'll like it. Thank you. <laughs>